Welcome to the Electromagnetic Works video tutorial series, a collection of videos that show firsthand how accurately and how quickly you can have designs analyzed and optimized inside SOLIDWORKS. This video shows how to use the Electromechanical Simulation Package EMS to simulate the power line insulator inside SOLIDWORKS. In this tutorial we cover the Electrostatic Simulation module. Before a simulation can be started, the CAD model of the insulator must be built or imported into SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS offers excellent help and training materials such as tutorials that cover this pre-analysis phase. The starting point will be a readily built CAD model which will simply be loaded and analyzed. The insulator assembly includes a silicon rubber insulator, a fiberglass spine, a set of copper contacts and an aluminum hanger with part of the conducting wire modeled on top of the hanger. Note also that there are two air components. One part covers the device directly around and in contact with the assembly. Fields can be strong there, so it is essential to add them to analyze the fields close to the bodies. The outer air is used as an enclosure volume. This part should be made sufficiently large to ensure that fields are small enough at its far edge. This way discontinuities are avoided since the domain would not be truncated too close to the insulator. At this stage, the model is ready to be analyzed. Next to the SOLIDWORKS Assembly Manager is the EMS tab. In here, you can select the assembly and launch a new study. Since we are interested in the electric field, as well as the temperature distribution, we will create an electrostatic study coupled with thermal analysis. The first step is to apply materials to all the parts. The conductor segment is composed of aluminum. By applying the material to all of the bodies in this part and selecting aluminum from the non-magnetic materials section, you can apply all of the electrical parameters of that part. You can also copy it to the hanger, which is also composed of aluminum, by dragging and dropping. Another way to apply multiple materials is to select them all together and apply the material to them, collectively. This is the way that air is applied to the inner and outer air components together. For all three contacts, the material of copper is applied. This can be found in the non-magnetic materials folder. The fiberglass rod inside the silicon rubber insulator will have its own material created from scratch. You can create a folder and then create a new material within that folder. By giving it a name, as well as all of the electric parameters such as permeability, permittivity, and its electric and thermal conductivities, you complement the existing materials library with new materials that might not be found in there. You can then assign this material the same way that you would any material found in the original library. The same can be done for the silicon rubber insulator. You create the material in the folder and given all the parameters needed. You can take advantage of this feature by creating multiple variants of a single material for use in different scenarios. They can all be saved into different folders for use in the same way as the folders in the EMS material library. When all bodies have a material assigned to them, a blue checkmark will appear on the solids icon. The next step is to apply loads and restraints. In an electrostatic study, you have a set of voltage and charge restraints, as well as thermal restraints in case the thermal analysis was coupled. For now, we pick a fixed voltage to apply on the power line. The power line operates at 80,000 volts. When applying a fixed voltage, you can either set it on a body or on a surface. 
For now, ground will be applied at the end of the copper contact. In this electrostatic example, convection will be selected from the set of thermal boundary conditions. All of the faces that come into contact with air will be selected. And then the convection properties, which consist of the convection coefficient and the ambient temperature, will be set. This completes the loads and restraints for this example. The final step before running the analysis is to create the mesh. Meshing in EMS is easy. Simply set the global size and the tolerance for small spaces, then you can create the mesh. Of course, it is a good idea to apply mesh controls in case there are bodies that need smaller mesh sizes for better accuracy. Select either bodies or faces, and then specify the mesh size. In this example, the inner air, the contacts, as well as the conductor and the hanger, all have a mesh control of 7 millimeters. This sets the mesh size for these bodies alone, separate from the global mesh size. Another mesh control is applied for the insulator and the fiberglass spine within. These bodies will have a mesh size of 5 millimeters. Now you can create the global element size. In this example, the global element size will be 250 millimeters. And the tolerance will be 2 tenths of a millimeter. Once the mesh is complete, you can now run the analysis.